made a pretty significant impact um, then, and it hasn't stopped since. Um, his philanthropy is as great as his success. He got two degrees from ISU, a master's and a bachelor's, and he hasn't forgotten where he came from. In uh, September of 2012, he was awarded the highest award that the university gives its alumni, and that's our Distinguished Alumni Award. He wasn't able to join us because, as you all know, in September, he's kind of busy. So um, he allowed us to uh, in, infringe upon his free time after the season was over. As the longest tenured head coach in Cincinnati Bengal history, his, in his 10th season, um, he has posted the most wins of any, any coach, 69, and has led the team to uh, postseason wins. He is now the second longest serving tenured coach in the NFL with the same team following only that of Bill Belichick. Um, he was a consensus uh, coach of the year in 2009, and it's my pleasure to introduce to you Morgan Lewis, the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals and an ISU alum. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm honored to be here today. My wife Peggy uh, is in the back. We, uh, we laughed because we met over in Garrison Turner Hall, so uh, <laughs> we've both been a long time Bengals. But it's a, it's a pleasure being here. I was very flattered and honored uh, for the award this fall, and I think it's always great uh, to have an opportunity to come back here and, uh, and, and see the campus and see the things the university is doing. Um, you know, it's uh, doing what I get to do, you know, I, probably, I would have never been able to do it had it not been for Idaho State. And, uh, and I can remember the very day in August of 1976, walking uh, in the doors of the dome, and then they walked us up, myself and uh, Bob Matsy, another guy who I played with, ironically also from the Pittsburgh area, walked us in and showed us uh, the dome uh, back then in 1976. And, uh, so it's been a, a lot of time a lot of great memories of being here uh, in Pocatello and uh, I've seen the university continue to grow and continue to prosper and, uh, and I'm glad that uh, Peggy and I can continue to try and help in that process as much as we can. So uh, it's been really, you know, privileged and, uh, and honored to be here uh, with things and I uh, look forward to, uh, to the uh, dinner this evening and seeing a lot of old friends and people that, uh, that uh, were so instrumental in, uh, in what I do. Uh, I've learned how to uh, I think uh, communicate with people how to uh, coach and teach football and, and people here right at Idaho State uh, from the coaches that I had here and all the other people in the community uh, that were so uh, instrumental in, in my own development. So um, I'm just very fortunate to come here. You know, people uh, have a lot of opportunities and you never know uh, which way uh, things are going to take you. But, uh, Certainly, uh, Pocatello is, is very special to us in Idaho State. So, we're really, really thankful to be here. Coach, can you talk a little bit about, you said it's important to you, this university, and get, getting to where you are now. Can you expand a little bit more on that? Well, I think, um, you know, when you when you come someplace, uh, particularly when you uh, come to college, and, you know, I think when I came to college, I really wanted to be a bench that I wanted to stay in football, I wanted to be a coach. And, uh, and I was very fortunate to, uh, whether it be the professors here on campus, uh, whether it be the coaches, the teachers, from uh, the former trainer and Phil Lucky to the equipment people, John Briggs and guys like that, uh, that, you know, were so, uh, what's the word? They, they treated you the right way, and they taught you how to treat people uh, the correct way, and I still think that's important today. Uh, it's important with, uh, you know, in what I do daily. It's important the way my staff carries himself uh, and what we do. And I just think that uh, sometimes those things are overlooked. And, uh, you know, the last coach, obviously, I played for here was Dave Craigthorpe. And uh, uh, how coach uh, treated the players, uh, you know, Jim Cutter, who uh, I grew up here with, Pocatello, with, with Dirk, and, uh, you know, being a part of being at their house all the time dinner and Thanksgiving and, and other meals all the time and, and watching how he carried himself and so forth. I spent time with John McCarthy here at Pocatello High School. and uh, So these guys really uh, were helpful to me and, and the rest of the coaching staff I had here that I played for Denny Moore. I got started coaching here with them and, and they taught me how to do things the right way and treat people the right way. And uh, 
I, I think nowadays what we see in sports is is such a quick fix in things. Everything, you know, everything is so instantaneous. And, and unfortunately, I think that affects college athletics way too much right now. And uh, you know, you, you know, the, the time spent learning how to to be a person, to be a student, uh, is so important. Uh, you know, to, to work hard in the classroom. I think sometimes that gets overlooked because now all we see is the highlights on TV and so forth. But in order to get here, you know, the best players that I've ever been around and coach, and I've been fortunate to be around about six or seven Hall of Fame players, they were the smartest guys. And, and so they were the guys who knew how to take the best notes, they knew how to do to, to really do their job to the utmost of their ability. And they had great physical tools, but their mental aptitude helped them to be the best players. And that's why they've been Hall of Fame players in national football. You said you met your wife here. It's, it's Valentine's Day. What type of memories come back now? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you know, we went to the Sandpiper for dinner, which we could never afford to go to. <laughs> a big deal for us was if we could get a bag of chips at the college market. That was a big deal. And, uh, but uh, uh, we got engaged out at, uh, gosh, I can't remember, it was a seafood restaurant. Now I guess it's Red sea Lobster, Galley. the Sea Galley. So uh, a lot of memories and, uh, you know, of uh, being here and uh, you know, being school, as I said, I, I, I told uh, your athletic director, Jeff Ting, that I wish I had a, a penny for every time I walked across the field from Garrison Turner over here to the Dome, uh, because it's just, you know, uh, for nine years, you know, <laughs> you know, back and forth to meals where I lived, uh, uh, where I lived is no longer here, but, uh, you know, it's just been, it's a lot of great memories. Coach, you talk about the smartest guys being the best to coach, and a lot of times, uh, uh, these NFL guys are coming out of so-called football factories, but Idaho State, you know, has select few. They do have good representation in the NFL. But talk to me about, you know, the guys from Idaho State that you've encountered in the NFL and how they represent the university. Well, I, I think obviously, you know, I was here when we recruited Merrill, and uh, Merrill Hodge had a great career in the NFL, and uh, you know, went to school here at Highland, and uh, so I watched Merrill from the time he was in, you know, a young player in high school, uh, all the way through. And, uh, you know, so he learned the fundamentals of football and, and really what it is, and that's what it's all about. And, and obviously now the guy who continues to star is Jared Allen. And, uh, you know, Jared had a fine career here. He was, I was told he was just a long snapper, and there he is leading the NFL in sacks. So <laughs> <laughs> I can get very good information. But, uh, you know, I, I think that the, the thing about the National Football League is, and I think that the, I'm going to get a chance to speak with the the uh, football team later this afternoon is what guys have to understand is if you will continue to develop and work hard as a football player, we'll find you. I don't care where you go to school. And, uh, and, and that's so important. What you do, unfortunately, too many guys, after they get done playing, then they think they're going to prepare themselves for the National Football League. It's what you do weekly on tape which counts as a player. You know, everybody wants to, to get at the end of their career and then try to improve themselves physically. Well, you, what you put on tape is your calling card. That's what gets you in the door. And, uh, and that's the most important thing you can do. And I think sometimes too many people, that, that gets overlooked these days. And the type of person you are gets overlooked. And, uh, and, and that's so important because the guys are, to get to stay the longest are, are the guys that are the smartest and know how to work. And, and start a task, finish a task, and do it day to day to day. Now, what are you going to tell the football team? Are you going to tell them just that? Or what else, that, what you can know. you add to the, that you're going to say to the football team later? Well, that uh, you know, it's a select group of guys who have an opportunity to go on and play. So make sure while you're here that you do the best job you can in school as well. Because that's going to be important. If you have that degree, once you have that degree, nobody can take that away from you. And, uh, and, and that's going to open up doors as well. The other thing is the relationships with the people that you develop while you're on a team and while you're on this campus are going to be people that can help you down the line that you'll never know, or you can help them. And so the impressions you make on those people uh, are going to be helpful to them and helpful to you uh, for the rest of your life. And uh, I know from the guys that I played with here, and uh, you know I played for three different head coaches here, but those guys still today, I don't care where we're playing, They'll either come to Cincinnati or they'll call me because we're playing in their city or near their city.
and say, hey, I want to bring my son, daughter to the game, my wife, I want to come to the game. And, and, and I look forward to those times. That, you know, I may not get to see them a great deal, but uh, if I get to see them for a little bit prior to the game, or the night before, the day before, uh, then that's fun. And, uh, and I think those kind of relationships, they, 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 guys, when they're 18, 19, and 20 years old, they don't understand that down the line, what that's going to mean to them later in their life. Coach, tell me what your decision process was to come here from Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> Small town Pocatello in the late seventies. Well, I, I was going to go to Purdue, but I didn't have a, a full scholarship to go there. If I'd have went there, there'd be no Keena Turner. I was teasing Keena <laughs> about that. But uh, so I did. I got the opportunity, uh, ironically, to come here to school because of a guy who was uh, uh, coaching at, at West Virginia University at the time. And uh, they had a coach that was friends with the coach that was here, Walt Pozdowski. Uh, Walt Pozdowski, I think, was the offensive line coach when I came here. And uh, they somehow put two and two together. And uh, there was a, a young man from Highland High School uh, who decided they had signed to a scholarship agreement, decided he was going to go on a mission and not play football anymore. And so they had a scholarship open uh, in July and uh, put two and two together. And I remember getting the the phone call from my the family friend who grew up in the same town I was, who was coaching at WVU, and I couldn't remember where he said Iowa State. I thought, you know, Iowa State. He said, no, no, Idaho State, and it's in the mountains, and I couldn't figure out what that meant at the, you know, man, you sat on a building, sat on the peak of a mountain, but what it meant, you know, because when you grew up in Western Pennsylvania, you have no idea. But, uh, but I, I, you know, I had turned down some other opportunities, um, and I kind of was feeling like I didn't want my parents to have to, uh, kind of foot the bill for me to go to school, and I took the opportunity, and it was great. And uh, you know, so I spent you know nine years here, and uh, uh, it was just a great time. And uh, you know, I'm very fortunate that, that that's the road that brought me here. Do you have a moment in the nine years that sticks out to you as maybe one of your favorites of being here? Well, I tell you what, probably you know, because when I was first here, we didn't win a lot of games, <laughs> um, but. Uh, Probably when, you know, there's a couple, you know, I, obviously when I was a senior in 80, we beat the Arena down there, and, you know, and, uh, but I remember walking across the, the field with Jim Cutter one day, I don't know, we were walking back from lunch or dinner, and, uh, and walking back over here, and it was here when we won the National Championship when I was a graduate assistant coach, and I remember saying something that, uh, we were talking about something, and I said, well, I've never won more than eight games or whatever it was, or whatever it was here, and he said, oh, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll win more than that this year, and uh, obviously the team went on to win the one the National Championship, and, uh, but uh, just a lot of, you know, a lot of times as a player, as a coach, uh, you, know, uh, you know, obviously winning when I was a graduate assistant, winning the championship uh, uh, was a huge, uh, a huge accomplishment. Uh, uh, you know, the big sky was, you know, kind of ruling the, the one double world, world at that time. You know, boys had won it the year before and we won it the next year, and I think Montana State uh, won it thereafter. And so, but it's uh, been, you know, it was a great experience. And, uh, you know, as I said, you know, I played for, you know, starting out Joe Pascal, who I got to know later on uh, when I was also an NFL assistant. And uh, uh, Mike Murphy, who just retired from the Colts, was the defensive coordinator. So. These guys, you know, uh, were, you know, even though we didn't win a lot of games, obviously we had some good coaches that were here. There's been a lot of great coaches that have come through Idaho State. And uh, so that's, uh, you know, so I, I guess it's been, a, you know, a real blessed uh, thing to be from here. What do you say to people about this university and about this city? What makes this place special? Well, I think it's, it's the, the university, to me, makes Pocatello. I mean, the, you know, Pocatello has continued to grow, but the university is such a big part of, of Pocatello, and a lot of the former athletes continue to live here. They, they, they come here to school from other parts of, of the country. They end up staying here and raising their families in this area, and, and so it makes that kind of impact on them. And, uh, you know, it's not a place that, you know, you, you're coming in and you just can't wait to get out of here. You know, people end up staying in this area, and they may grow up in Southern California, they may be from Midwest cities or whatever, but they end up staying here. And uh, so I think that, you know, that, that says a lot for it. And then a lot of the people, you know, like Dave Nelson out here, and, you know, guys that, that I knew that uh, were, were working here, and I knew when I was, was here working and, and coaching. So 
Um, it, it just shows that, uh, you know, people come here and there's a lot of, uh, it's a great place to raise a family. And, uh, and I think that, to me, when you're a coach, you know, you're looking for places where, where your family can continue to, to thrive and prosper all the time and, and, the, and your coaches' families can. And, and that's important. Other than the Red Lobster, what's the biggest change that you've seen, maybe on campus? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to ask Casey for the name of the building. The Rendezvous. The Rendezvous. <laughs> because, you know, that's where the old football dorm was, East Hall, that I actually lived in. And uh, so, but, uh, but no, the campus, uh, you know, I was there when the library was built across the street. And uh, now to see the Rendezvous there and, and, and so forth is... So that's that's neat. It's to continue to see the development. I haven't seen the Performing Arts Center, which I guess we'll see later this evening, and uh, you know things like that. Uh, uh, the continual growth of the, the, the athletic facilities, I think, is always important because that's what the coaches need here to continue to help them recruit. You know that you know when you're a college coach, you know the important parts of recruiting are academics and athletic facilities. You know those are the things that are important as they go into these homes and young men and women to come here to school. Coach, Idaho State's been kind of in a rough patch for a little while, and we know Cincinnati had the uh, nickname the Bungles for a while. And now Coach Kramer's coming in, he's starting to get things turned around with academics, uh, grades are going up. What would you say are similarities between getting an NFL team turned around and into, into the playoffs and getting you know Idaho State turned around? Well, I think continuity. And, uh, and, you know, having a plan and sticking with the plan. And, uh, you know, you, you, you have to do that. You know, you have to, you have to set a course and, uh, and you got to stay on course, you know, with that. And you got to have a little luck along the way uh, because injuries play such a big part in, in all what we do in athletics. But uh, you got to have a plan and, and you got to turn things around. Like you said, academically, you got to continue to recruit the, the, the student athletes that can come here and play at that level. Uh, continue to build and win football games, and uh, you know that's what you have. You know you really have to do. You got to you know develop that nucleus of, of guys that are mentally strong, mentally tough, and, and share the same passion and vision you do uh, as far as moving forward and winning. Uh, because that's what's going to take. There's no magic to it. It's going to be out preparing, out performing, and out playing the opposition that's going to push you over the hump. Coach, what lessons did you learn at ISU that they will apply to well, I, I think, uh, you know, and I, I know I've learned it a lot of times along the way, but uh, one of the things that I think is very important is, to, is one of the statements that I've always been told me, they don't care what you know until they know that you care. And I think that's really important. And, uh, and I think that's a, one of the most significant things you can learn as a coach, uh, that sometimes it's hard to reach some players, uh, but when my job as a professional coach, and it's no different here, is to take that player and to help him be as successful as he can uh, through his career. You know, they have this, as I call it, a little IPO. I want that IPO to keep soaring and not to hit the dips. Um, and, and, it's, uh, and it's about them and, and the vision that we have for them, and hopefully along with that, that we're going to win a lot of football games along the way uh, with, with that thing. So I think that's very important that way. To follow uh, the football team at all? I mean, I know you're a little bit busy at the same time here, but do you get the chance to take a look and see what's going on? Well, we are, yeah, we you know get a chance to, to check scores on Sunday morning. Now, sometimes the score out here in the Mountain West is not quite <laughs> uh, posted all the time in, in some of the papers back east. But yeah, we, I do get the follow along, uh, and you know I get the uh, alumni newsletters and so forth. Get the follow you know that way as well. So, but I but I do get the follow along, and uh, uh, you know I. To, you know, one of my coaches went to Idaho, so you know they always you know tease that way. And, uh, but, uh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we get to follow along uh, with that. What did people say to you when they heard you were going to Idaho State? Well, I mean, you grew up in a small town like I did, or back in the Pittsburgh area. I mean, they have no idea about Idaho. You know, they they really don't. Uh, and and uh, so you know, they just really know you know kind of you know what's it about. Uh, but to, to go up and, and be like in the Tetons, and I can remember going with uh, one of the players' girlfriend's dads when, when he took a bunch of us fly fishing, you know, <laughs> things like that. I mean, those are stuff you don't get a chance to do growing up. Right? 
Coach, we've had a couple of All-Americans in the past couple of seasons from Idaho State, Josh Hill and Roderick Rumble. Uh, anything on the radar as far as uh, maybe late round draft picks or bringing them in as undrafted? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it, I'm not into the, I, I haven't begun to get much into the process yet of, uh, of looking at college players. Um, you know, that comes to me, uh, you know, we finish our season and we evaluate our guys. Then we have to work and evaluate the NFL free agents, and then I get into, we get into college stuff. So, um, from what from I understand from our area scout that, that comes uh, through here is there's you know there's a couple of prospects here that, that have an opportunity, whether it be late round picks or, or priority free agent type players, that you have a couple coming up this year, and uh, and, and that's a good thing. So, um, you know, I always one of the first things I tell our rookie players is it doesn't matter how you got here. It's what you do while you're here to stay here. Because once you're in this building, then you've got to do everything in your power to stay here. And, uh, and, and that's what I think you know is the best part for these guys. Is I think every year there are guys from Idaho State getting opportunities, and it's what they do once they get inside the NFL club to stay. Super Bowl champs in your division. <laughs> what do you got to do to knock them off? Well, we just have to keep playing like we play. You know, we know it's a, a tough physical division. And, uh, and our guys are, are built that way, put together that way. And, uh, uh, you know, Baltimore had a great run. They had a great finish to their season. And, uh, you know, I wish we would have had an opportunity to play them at the end of the year for it to mean a little bit more uh, than it did. But, uh, but I look forward to competing against them all the time in and, uh, and Pittsburgh and Cleveland. And, uh, uh, you know, we know it's going to be tough and physical. Uh, having, you know, I have gotten paychecks from all four teams in that division. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm been stuck in a four-hour radius from home now for a long time. So it's my, I guess, 22nd season in the NFL coming up. So, uh, you know, right there, a four-hour radius from home. Uh, but it, it'll be good. They'll have a little hangover. That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Last question for you, Coach. Are our Bills and Jaguars as bad as we think they are? <laughs> you don't have to answer that. No. <laughs> Spot, people but. don't understand the fine line, you know, of winning and losing the National Football League. And it, unfortunately, it starts and stops a lot around the quarterback position. And, and you know, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta have a guy that can take care of the football and, and, and get your team moving down the field. And, uh, it's just, uh, you know, I mean, you know, what in 2010, you know, Buffalo was the, you know, they were the story of the NFL in the first half of the season. Don't remind me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what happens. And then, boom, all of a sudden, you know, you, you catch up with things and, uh, you know, they get a guy or two injured and, and, and now you're going back the other way. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hard thing, but you got to have a quarterback that's productive, he's efficient with the football, and then you got to play good defense. And, uh, you know, um, that's generally the, the script that, that, you know, that writes itself that way. And, you know, when you have to draft a quarterback, hopefully there's a quarterback there that's good enough to draft. And that's unfortunately with, with Jacksonville, they've been struggling at that spot for a bit, you know, those, those two clubs that way. Hi guys, thanks. Thanks coach. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Let me get the Bills question. <laughs>